Good morning everyone, Irrigation Farmer back again today and we're going to try planting today. There she is, ready to roll. Dad got most of his planting done um, while I was spraying and doing other things, but uh, now it's my turn. And it's a little windy, it's supposed to get maybe windier. Hopefully it just stays a nice little breeze like it is now. We'll find out, because I'd like to get some drone shots, but uh, 30 mile per hour wind and drones don't mix. So first things first, I'm gonna go top it off here with some fuel and then figure out what kind of seed I want. Probably load it up real quick and then head to the field as I'm gonna do a 20 acre field first, get that out of the way, and then go do my pivot. So here's the seed that we're going to put in, so decals what we plant, we're dealers for them. Um, I don't actually need a smart stacks, but it was tough to find non-smart stacks this year. So this is kind of a drought tolerant hybrid, so that's what I'm going with. Luckily I only have to fill up 16 boxes, not too bad, and only 6 bags of seed, so halfway there. And we are off to the field. Hopefully there's not a lot more in traffic on this uh, crazy busy road here. Luckily with the fold, it's not too bad. You can kind of see it back there. I can go a little slower just because it's a little wobbly and stuff, but uh, at least I'm not crazy wide. But it's still kind of a pain when traffic comes by. And of course the morning I decided to go down, there have been four cars so far. Awesome. Almost halfway there. I can make it. Made it to the field here. So this is a flood field that I have bedded. And what that means is basically, or marked, basically just to make pathways here that the water can run through. Hopefully irrigate a lot faster. So the downside is I did not use the same GPS. So it might be off just a hair. So hopefully we'll make it work. All right, so I made the outside pass and GPS and everything, so let's go take a look, see what things are looking like, take a dig, make sure seed looks good, and get to it. So this ground is really dry, has not been pre-irrigated or anything. I wanted to plant first and then I'll pop it up. I don't like to do that, but things have been drying so fast I get worried about irrigating and then trying to plant into it. So there's my seed right at two inches, so there should be another one around here so we'll try to find it and there it is right there about two inches pretty good uh, compaction or sidewall activity I mean everything looks pretty good so I don't think I need to increase anything so I think she's set pretty good not much moisture in the seed but uh, that's kind of expected so as I said, we'll irrigate this here another few days and it will just soak up the ground hopefully and pop up the seed. And if we got rain, that'd be fantastic too. So far so good. Um, I just hope that I can irrigate this field all right. It's gonna be kind of hard because it's long runs and it's really dry, but gotta try to do something out here. So that's kind of the way it's gonna be. We'll see how it goes. But I'm probably a little over halfway done with this field. It's just slow because of turnarounds and stuff and backing up and just slower with flood fields. But it seems to be planting nice. In fact, it's extremely dry. I just hope we get some moisture. That would be nice, guys. You guys that are really wet, send it our way. 16 acre field done. Time to fold up. And on to the next. Get a little hot and toasty out here, but uh, got the field opened up at least to the outside around. Now my favorite part is filling up 16 rows with 16 bags. There we go. Alright, everything is loaded up. Should be good to go. I should have about eh, 15 acres or so, 20 acres of fertilizer left. So get a lot of that done and uh, hopefully just get going. 
Got the AB line set and just kind of going. So we're gonna jump out, see how it's split behind me now that I don't have to worry about guidance and stuff and see where we're at. All right, it's getting a little windy here, but what's gonna be tricky is half this field is no chill and the other half has been chilled. So I'm adjusting my system as it's going, but you can see I'm going through five bit of residue here. So we'll see how it's looking, how it's planting. So it might be planting just a little shallow, but it's not terrible. There's actually decent moisture. I wish it would go down a little bit more. Um, a lot of trash, but it's actually doing a pretty good job of making it clean. So my experiment out here is to let this hairy vetch grow a little bit more. They say when it starts to flower is when it produces the most nitrogen. Now there's not a whole lot here, so I'm not expecting a bunch. But if I can get 50 pounds an acre, that's still a lot of money I'm not having to put into the field. Lots of cover too, so we'll see how it works. Or if it's a nightmare, I'll compare it to that side of the field. So far a lot more moisture though. Yeah, I was actually able to flood the drone a little bit, so that was cool. It's, it actually has not been as windy as it's supposed to be, so that's awesome. It's supposed to be like 40 mile per hour gusts, so weatherman got that wrong. So maybe he'll start getting the rain chances wrong because we're about like 0%. So, you know, maybe we'll get up to 50% and get a shower. Like a dream. However, we're going to talk about some other things here. Uh, we're going to talk about the no-till versus tillage from what I've seen and kind of dive into that a little bit. First things first, I've got three displays in this field, or in this tractor. This one is my GPS, just drives the tractor, easy to be. These two basically are the same thing. This is the brains, and this is basically just showing what the brain is seeing. Just a fancy way to have two maps, and I can take this home and look at stuff. But this is really where I make my changes. This does the planting population, the downforce, the nitrogen, anything and everything I want to do with this planter, it's all controlled right here. And this too, because that actually is my furrow cleaners, or my uh, cleaners, and I'll talk about those in a bit too. So on this screen, two big things I'm noticing that on the no-till. One is the moisture. Moisture is running 40, 40 to 50%. Really good. The tillage farm over there is running about 24%, 25%. Really bad. This probably will germinate a seed that will not. Uh, this is holding moisture, that is not. So, big difference is there. Second difference, this map, this map is completely red and my ground talk, ground contact is not very good. On this planter, we have hydro, hydraulic downforce, so that is probably the best you can get. And it is putting, trying to get 600 pounds down per row, which is a lot. Basically, I am running out of planter weight. I cannot keep going to get the correct depth that I'm wanting. So 78% of the time, right at the second, I am getting the depth I want. The other time is, it's still in the ground, but it's just shallow. On the tillage part, I'm getting about 99%, 98%. So I'm getting exact what I want. However, it's just dry dirt. So, and it's been worked. It should be able to get that. So that's a downside about tillage or no-till on my instance is the ground is really hard. However, I love what I'm seeing when I dig it up. Just that nice cottage cheese. I mean, it's not fantastic, but it's still getting, I'd say good to better, I guess. Um, over there is just uh, dust. So I like what I'm seeing. It's just, I know it takes time before you can start to mellow out that field and cover crops and no-till are the way to go to do that. So those are the two big differences that I notice with the planter and uh, on the no-till versus tillage. So I really like the no-till. Um, strip till has worked out really good for us too, but even this year 
if I could get better contact and stuff, I think I'd like the no-till better, but that's a little iffy because I'm not quite getting the seed where I want it. Had some hitchhikers come in here. Hello. Hi. And someone else. I don't think he's made it on camera yet. There's the new guy, little Cal and James, asleep like babies do. Someone did not have a nap, so she is not a very happy camper. But, are you having fun? Maybe a little bit, guys. So there's a pretty nasty fire from New Mexico. And you can see, that's not clouds. And it's making a pretty sun, but uh, yeah. Kinda nasty down there, sorry guys. Hope you can get that put out soon. Sorry, a little dusty there. Um, I had some issues with some of the rows. They were rubbing on a wire and a uh, cable, or I guess a line for air. So I had to duct tape some things and then kind of cinch them up a little bit. So we gotta change that design because that is not working. I think with the no-till and even just strip-till, just stocks getting in there, rub it. Yeah, not good. So I haven't talked about this much. I talked about it a bunch last year, um, but it's even worse than last year. So we are dry, like always it seems like, but uh, beyond what we were last year. Uh, last year we were able to grow about an average crop to a little less, but we abandoned some fields and abandoned some alfalfa. This year, we're going to abandon again, probably, and have most likely less than average yields, if not worse. I really hope my corn will survive. Um, right now, it's not looking promising, but you got to stay optimistic. I hope that we get some rain. Rain is definitely a cure-all. Uh, it makes it, things go round in the world. But uh, snowpack is a big thing, too, and our snowpack is not very good and melting away fast. We've only had two runs. We'll have our third one coming up. And they're talking about um, eight to 10 runs of irrigation. And to kind of give an idea for you guys that are more curious on the water situation. So a run of, on this farm here is 200 acres. One run, I can put about an inch and two tenths across 90 acres out of 200. So if I just focused on 90 acres of my farm, I could put on about 12 inches of moisture. Now that's abandoning over 120 or 110 acres and not doing anything at all with that. And also that's saying if we didn't get any more rain. So again, hopefully we get some rain and we can bump that up to another eight, nine inches. And we should be about right. But uh, you know, that's just kind of what we're playing with here. A lot of areas you might have an allocation where you could put 15 inches and that would be across every single acre a big difference plus rainfall but that's just the year it is so hopefully things change we get some moisture soon anyways though complaining over done with it um one thing more complaining just joking so not there there we go i'm only planting three and a half miles per, per hour which is crazy slow but the problem is is i'm trying to get 22 gallons per acre of nitrogen and I say nitrogen, it's actually a mixture of 10340, which is a phosphorus and nitrogen, so I'm putting both on at the same time. However, with the VFLI system, it is limited because we have four VFLIs and 16 rows. Come to find out, we can only put on about 15 gallons. It's because I'm trying to do a lot more, we've got to slow down the planter. Uh, doing a whopping 17 acres an hour, so still not bad, but um, should be able to do a lot more, about 35 acres an hour. This field is taking forever. Well, I'm a fertilizer, and I'm not gonna really, I don't wanna go back to the shop, grab another tank. So we're done for the night, 6.30, go home and eat some dinner, and start again tomorrow. And hopefully finish up this field, and then, uh, I don't know if we're putting any more or not, just depending on what Dad wants to do, because there's one field he's not really sure if he wants to do. Anyways, so we'll be back tomorrow, and uh, finish her up. See you guys in the morning.